While there are countless videos online comparing the visuals of the Modern Warfare 2 remaster with those of the original, I've yet to see a video that specifically focuses on a side-by-side -side comparison of the difference in performance. Sensing a gap in the market, that is exactly what I have for you today. We're going to be taking a look at what the improved visuals mean for our frame rates, and we'll also have a quick chat about what this means for gameplay, and whether or not the remaster really offers good value in terms of its performance cost. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Pixel and welcome to the Sapphire Tech YouTube channel. To start off, I want to make it clear that it is not the goal of this video to criticise the Modern Warfare 2 remaster. There's no denying that there's been a huge step up in the visual department as well as a decent number of other small improvements. In fact, it's only really now that I've got the footage side by side in my video editor do I truly appreciate just how much the graphics have been improved. But anyway, with that out of the way, let's get right to it. We'll start off by taking a quick look at the beginning of the game during the pit run. With both games maxed out at 1440p, we see that the remaster mostly bounces between 120 and 240 FPS, while the original spends most of its time anywhere between 300 and 500. It's worth noting that this level in the remaster has been slightly expanded on, however, as both versions still appear to be mostly GPU limited, that doesn't appear to be having much of an effect on performance. This indicates that the performance difference, at least in this instance, is purely down to the improved visuals taking slightly longer to render, which is exactly what we expected. The thing is, that's not always the case. I came across multiple instances where the remaster found itself limited by hardware other than our graphics card. At the same time, there's even a couple of sections where we see the performance of the remaster beating out that of the original, but to be fair, this only really happens in very specific circumstances, but it does at least indicate that the newer engine itself does offer at least some small optimization gains. However, these gains rarely become obvious due to the cost of these improved visuals outweighing the newer engine's optimizations. To be completely honest, I was expecting this video to be a little more interesting. I was hoping that maybe we'd come across some situations where we'd see the remaster offer much better visuals than the original while also beating it out in performance, which is something that we have seen in the past with remasters of games such as Borderlands, as well as what we're expecting to see in the remaster of Crisis. That said, when this does happen, it's normally due to huge optimizations on the CPU rather than the GPU, and truth be told, Modern Warfare 2 already had fairly decent CPU optimization, so our findings here shouldn't really be all that much of a surprise. For the most part, we see the original game offering around 100-200% higher performance than what we see in the remaster at 1440p. Said out loud, this seems like a massive difference, however, in reality, the real world difference in performance is actually rather irrelevant and there's a number of reasons for this. First off, while I'm sure that most of the people checking out a video like this won't fall into this camp, the vast majority of PC gamers still generally play their games on a 60Hz 1080p monitor with vSync enabled, and since both versions are very easily able to hold a 60fps minimum, for all intents and purposes the performance difference between the two is going to appear pretty much identical for most gamers. After that, you've got the simple fact that when you move on over into high refresh rate territory, both games are still going to be able to saturate the vast majority of that refresh rate most of the time. Now, while I know there's also generally a benefit to input latency while playing at frame rates above your monitor's maximum refresh rate, that benefit is nowhere near as relevant when you start talking about variable refresh rate monitors, i.e. FreeSync, because there is also input latency improvements to be had by having the game limit your frame rates, at least in most cases. So while you can choose to play with vSync disabled and without a frame rate limit, that setup is rapidly being phased out due to the prevalence of the refresh rate technologies and a better understanding of the mechanics of input latency. The final reason that I believe the performance difference is not all that relevant is simply because while the original Modern Warfare 2 does offer stupidly high frame rates, it's also prone to small stutters and I'm a firm believer that consistency is king when it comes to video game performance. While these small stutters aren't really a deal breaker, they can be felt and it does negatively affect the game's fluidity. Bearing all this in mind, if you're running a half decent gaming PC, Modern Warfare 2 Remastered is going to offer you the best looking, most complete campaign experience, but where things start to get a little bit more complicated is when we start looking at weaker systems and start taking the cost into consideration. You see, the problem with remasters like this that don't really offer much other than better visuals and a few other small tweaks is that their biggest competitor ends up being themselves. 
I think it's safe to say that gameplay and story are, or at least should be for the most part, the most important aspects of any game. So with these two aspects being pretty much identical between the two versions, you're going to end up getting pretty much the same experience regardless of which version you play. If you're gaming on a fairly low end system, there's a good chance that you're going to have a much better time playing the original, whereas if you've got a high end system, you've got very little to lose by going with the remaster. To be completely honest, while looking at the gameplay from each version side by side does make the graphical improvements extremely obvious, there were multiple times during my recording sessions where I had to do a double take and check which version of the game that I was currently running. Even now while editing this video, I'm constantly second guessing which version of the game that I'm looking at, not because they look the same visually, but simply because during the action heavy set pieces, I'm focused on the gameplay more than the graphical details. This brings us on to cost. At the time of recording this video, you can pick up a copy of the original Modern Warfare 2 for around 25% less than the cost of the remaster. The thing is, the remaster only contains the campaign where the original also has multiplayer and the Spec Ops game mode. In all fairness, the game only costs £20, so it's kinda hard to complain. I just can't help but feel that I'm only getting half the game when comparing the content available in each version, which is silly because I'll be the first to admit that I have no desire to revisit either Spec Ops modes or the multiplayer anyway. At the end of the day, Modern Warfare 2 Remastered is pretty decent. If you're somebody that's never got around to playing the Call of Duty campaigns and want to, then I have no problem in recommending that you pick up the remasters over the original releases. However, if like me, you already own the originals and you've already played through the campaigns, things are a little bit more complicated. The question turns into, is it worth paying 20 quid for slightly better graphics? Now, before people go off at me in the comment section, yes, I know the graphics are not only slightly better, they're much better, but honestly, when I'm not stopping to admire the scenery or watching one of the few story sections, the difference between the two really starts to blend together. I suppose in conclusion, what I'm saying is that both versions are great and which version you should personally go for is going to come down to your personal preferences rather than one being objectively better than the other in most cases. But with that said, that is going to be me done for today. If you're new around here, please do consider slapping that subscribe button and dinging that bell so you get notified of our future uploads. If you've liked this video, you can like this video and if you disliked it, there's a button for that too and all we ask is that you please let us know why you've disliked it so we can try and improve in future. If you've got any questions, suggestions or feedback, you can leave them down in the comment section below and I will try and get back to you. So from myself and everybody here at the Sapphire Tech YouTube channel, thank you so much for watching and until next time, we'll catch you later. Bye bye.